Oh, I'm sorry. I just got to remove this ice pack from all the burns that I received in that last uh, that last round, ladies and gentlemen. But welcome back to the Regional Championships of North America. My name is Will Hall. That there is Matej Zalakai. And we're moving into round number five of standard action today, where we've got over 1,200 players battling out to try and get into day number two. And more importantly, try and get themselves into that top 64, into that top eight, into that top two, into be number one and walk away calling themselves the North American champion. But low more magic before then so Matei I'm going to set you up what decks have we seen in the feature match this round we're going to see an Esper mid midrange mirror match which can be quite entertaining I mean there's a few ways this, ma this matchup can go uh, small differences in, in versions that we'll touch on but I'm looking forward to a fun match okay well let's see if we can get straight down to that match there here is up on the screen for you all <laughs> definitely not Esper werewolves but uh you know that's out of our control. It is what it is. Can I rant? Can I rant a little bit, Will? Just a okay, little bit. Rant, rant just, to me. just when you put in the decks in melee for your big tournaments, please don't do this. Just put in your <laughs> what your name, name is called. You're just making everyone on coverage job that much more difficult because you're definitely not playing as per werewolves. You're playing as per mid range, right? However, um, uh, I think the other deck, I, I want to see what the other deck is named because as per aggro, also not, I mean, <laughs> you can get away with that at least, but it's also like Esper mid-range, I would say, right? So it's an Esper mid-range mirror match. You're not going to lie. It's it's very similar. Both are playing wedding announcements. Uh, you know, it's, it's that sort of uh, that sort of deck. And both players are three and one record. So still a solid start to the day, but both players want to pick up a few more wins here. More importantly, look at those ETB play mats. Look at them. This is what players are going to be playing all, all weekend long, courtesy of Heavy Play. Little 10% discount code on the screen for you all. Dallas2024, if you want to go across the Heavy Play's website, get yourself a bit of discount next time you pick up one of these ETB play mats. So maybe you just want to get yourself, you know, an NRG Dice box, one of these nice magnetic ones that connect to your ETB play mat. As now off to the races, first play is going to be the Fairy Mastermind, and the follow-up play is going to be a Deep Cabin Bat. So, flies on both sides <laughs> of the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, both play uh, both players started with with Restless Anchorages, but now uh, Deep Cabin Bat sees the kind of bad news that there's two removal spells. Mm -hmm. Never something you quite want to see. But I think Luna, having drawn a wedding announcement, is probably want to start developing that right away. Because the earlier you get the wedding announcement on the board, especially in this match, wedding announcement is so, so good because the amount of value you get is just massive, especially if you if you land it early. Let's see if you can if Jared can match Luna here. All right, can. well, yeah, wedding announcements on both sides. Of course, end of turn is going to generate a 1-1 one, one token. If you attack with two or more creatures, you get to draw yourself a card. And once that card goes up to three, you flip it and all creatures will get plus one, plus one. You get that nice little anthem effect. Uh, I am a little disappointed. Still no werewolves on the battlefield yet, but, you know, we don't know. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how this game progresses for Luna on the left of your screen. Luna's. Very accomplished, uh, you know, just TCG player in general. Strategy games, that is her bag. And go for the throat is going to be cast here as we get in for three points of damage. Plus we get draw a card on the turn. Yeah, no, no trade here from from Jared, who doesn't really. I don't think he wants to fall behind on board even further, especially when Luna, uh, when she attacks with two creatures, uh, then she gets to draw a card of the wedding announcement. So I think I would have preferred to get another one one, uh, maybe just attacking in the air. But she is able to keep up uh, the cut down mana, which is very important. If, for example, we would see a Rafine, which is not that great in, onto a board with the Fairy Mastermind. If I was Luna, I would I would let Jared attack and wouldn't kill the the token with the with the trigger of the Rafine on the stack. Ooh. However, however, so did we wait until the trigger was yes. on the stack and yes. then kill? Still well played. Oh. Oh. Really, really nice. So attack with the token, put the Rafine trigger on the stack. With the trigger uh, on the stack, kill the fairy mastermind. And now Luna is in a position where where she has to decide if she wants to cut down the the one one uh, or not. But it looks like she's not going to do that. This she's is, going to probably keep the cut down for the Rafine uh, itself. I would say so. We've got an answer to the Rafine itself, or we just wait for the counter to be generated. Because if a not a a spell is pinned to the graveyard, a plus one, plus one counter is added, which means there's a spell in the graveyard that isn't in the hand for Jared. So happy mm. to do it this way. Uh, as you said, yeah. there's, there's a better target for that as we move forward. 
Like if you if you want to play cat down on token, it's best to do it when the when the trigger because it targets right. So you you would fizzle that. But I think Luna will want to uh, likely cut down the the Rafine anyway. It's a virtue off the top, so we could do go something mm. almost like end of turn virtue with a cut down main phase now while the shields are down. And we've said that a lot so far this weekend. Shields are down because there's so much like interaction at insta speed currently in standard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there going to be cut down paying for the ward here? I'm not even worry about the, the trigger to happen. Yeah. Just like, I'm paying it no matter what. You don't have to announce it. Yeah, and the follow-up play. Yeah. Uh, Rafine. And I, I assume a swing. Draw one card. So we got three good spells in hand. What do you not like here? It's going to be Tide a bad Yeah, I would have discarded Tide Binder. It's not, not the greatest in, in this sort of matchup all the time. But now we, we get the flipped wedding announcement for Luna. And this is kind of massive. Also, get another one-one, so the board is already pretty big for for Luna. And plus, really importantly, when Wandering Emperor and Virtue of Loyalty in hand, both are very important. If if the Virtue, even in these sorts of situations, sometimes if you have the opportunity, just slamming the Virtue as a five-man enchantment is absolutely massive, because you get if you get on the board first. It's really it can be really difficult for even if your opponent then plays a virtue of their own uh, just to just to come back into the game. Yeah. So again, as you said, there was word announcement flip. That's also key because every creature now gets plus one plus one. But it turns off like the cut downs on the other side, the battlefield being mm -hmm. passed. Yeah. Athena, it's just these slight little interactions that can uh, you know add up to to big wins. Jet on the right of your screen really needs to kind of have a big follow up play here to kind of keep on par with Luna. Because she is absolutely off to the races so far. Let's have a uh, free man. Maybe another wedding announcement. No, no. We'll go for the throat. For okay, throat. nice for three mana. Pay. But first with the with the two two, and now the flip of the wedding announcement on Jared's side. Who also gets another human. So. I see. I, I love it. I love that we're, it, it can be played at instant speed, but we're still doing it at sorcery speed because everybody's <laughs> just respecting, you know, yeah. instant speed from every uh, game here. That's oh, that's the, and I was gonna say where'd that token the, from? There's it's another human. Uh, it's soldier, the human. Right? Yeah, and uh, um, I'm seeing white border slander in the chat. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I I will not stand for this. White borders are are perfect no, <laughs> the no, way no, they no. are. I'm with you, chat. I'm with you. Oh. I'm not. It must be the boomer in you. You see. Uh, okay. You, you uh, just let go, dude. Just let go. It's okay. No, right? no, no. We're, not, we're not getting whiteboarded basics printed ever again. And you got to hold on to hope of that one time that you know you was was whiteboarded basics around when you got your top eight last. Sorry, I had, I had to try and cut a little deep. I'm printing them back like then. That. Nice try, though. <laughs> nice, tried. nice bait. Uh, like a big attack, <laughs> big attack from from Luna. Uh, you, you have to fish in a different pond, Wolf. To <laughs> to bait me the problem um, is i can't do mind chess against you i know i'm going to lose every single time but this is a bit of a combat phase we're looking at maybe doing a quadruple block against mm. the four four what can we yeah. be playing around um i mean wandering emperor i think it's it's on top of jared's mind as well as any any go for throat cut down shenanigans that that could arise here and i think this is a really good point from jared i think one of the key kind of things that happened in, in this game was the was a turn where luna decided to attack with two creatures um she didn't get to draw a card which which you know like we can say it has been relevant here but she didn't get create a token that turn I think that kind of put her at a little bit of a disadvantage position, and um, like maybe in in this sort of spot now, like Jared is wouldn't even fall too far be behind, even if, if like Luna just played a virtue, wouldn't even attack, but Jared could slam his own virtue and with a bigger board would would have been probably been able to, you know, take a better control of of, of the situation here. Okay, wondering hamper, uh, wondering. Uh... Oh my word, I'm losing this, but a wandering emperor in hand as well as the virtue of loyalty for Luna. But we do have on Jarrett's side the virtue of loyalty is obviously on an adventure. And we, you've always spoke about how powerful that can be if we can get that on the battlefield and just start keeping it ticking up. Of course, end of turn and tap all our creatures, add plus one plus one counters to them. We've got more creatures than Luna currently, so maybe that's the way that we can pull card advantage or you know, board advantage and try and win this game. Access to, to deck lists for both players. So they're fully aware that, um, you know, I think, is it on Luna's side? 
and there is no more lies on both sides. I missed it. So there's no more lies mm-hmm. on both. So again, having to kind of uh, play around that. Yeah, Luna, I think has uh, virtue and emperor. Can't play both though. I think uh, she she knows this. Uh, both players, I think, realize that. I think Jerry's deciding if he should try to play something from his hand or maybe try to slam ver- the the virtue of loyalty here. But I think he's quite scared of something like no more lies mm-hmm. into let's say if Luna went no more lies into a virtue of her own, that would be really painful for him. So he's trying to figure out if if he can play something else here. I think we've got another virtue in hand as well. So maybe we want to you know, get a bit more value generating in night. Wandering Emperor is going to come down now, though. Mm-hmm. It's like a nice foil version. And it's going to make a... Ooh, it's going to try to make a 2-2. Two, two, but it's not going to succeed as the tie binder is going to come down, stifle that trigger. Mm-hmm. Then a, mm-hmm. a block of two tokens. Two, so that's four damage is going to come across. Mm. And oh, okay, fiend and virtue, not too bad. But then, are we lacking cards in hand at this point to even make this relevant? Potentially, yes. But the uh, fiend's still a decent blocker against this sort of board. I assume Luna pass. Uh, oh. Both players just playing rounds. No, no more lies. The best they can. Yeah, pro- probably. Yeah, I mean, Luna has that virtual light. She can't use uh, the the Emperor, of course, because of tight binder, right? Don't mm-hmm. forget about yeah. that. So, do, because I'm just checking well, because you did have some problems with Tishana's tight oh, binder. So, what, you're why good? are you coming at me again? Come on, I got that one. <laughs> got that one. Planeswalker creature. You, you told me it's like a thousand times. An artifact. <laughs> There's no artifacts on the battlefield. Yeah, I know, oh, but it also it also says art, art, artifact creature of Planeswalker for on on tight binder. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sending you screenshots of all the text on that card now for the next couple of weeks and just like, you know, I know what it does. I know what it does. Or you're going to do it the other way to me. And be like, you got this. No, you forgot this. Yeah. So just a nice question in the chat because it says it's Esper tokens under both players. It's just what we decided to call the Esper mid-range, like with wedding announcements. There's also Esper mid-range without wedding announcement. That's yeah. We just call that Esper mid-range. But there's a few variations of, of these decks. There's not really, I wouldn't call any of these decks particularly spicy. Yeah, not like like token decks in the past where it's just like every single creature or threat in the deck is a token. This these decks just have a a large amount of ways to generate tokens through wandering emperors and as you said the wedding announcements as another mm-hmm. one enters the battlefield again playing around no more lives. <laughs> yes, but um, I think Jerry, I think he's out of cards here, right? I don't think uh, he is. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So the sign to get to play the the uh, wedding announcement over. The virtue that we've got uh, currently at the top of our screen on an adventure. Let's have a little look. How do we want to go about this for Luna? I think we're going to go to combat now. Are, are these going to go at the Wandering Emperor? Do you think, or do you think these go to face? Bear in mind, we are throwing one of these under the bus. No, I wouldn't, I, attack, I, attack, I wouldn't attack Emperor just because it's kind of turned off right anyway. Okay. So let's see. Oh, someone ta- in chat is talking about Jessica tokens. That was my deck, guys. That was just good, that? the good, good old days. Which standard format was, was that? It was it was standard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What which which one which format was that? Was that the Khan's block one? Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, for the World Magic Cup. We played that deck in in one of our in one of our seats, and it was it was sweet. You know, hurling outburst of flame, just cast and see some burn spells and other. Good yeah, things. I love that. That's that's probably good my favorite times. standard format. I used to play, I love playing Jeska. Uh, yeah, tr- Jeska yeah. Black or whatever it was back in the day. That was such a such a cool. We, well, we had pick of the litter, right? We had fetch lands and shock lands in that standard format. It was awesome. <laughs> Actually, I don't think we, uh, in that particular standard, I don't think we did. The, man, the mana bases were, I think, like a bunch of pain lands and uh, like temples, stuff like that, and fetches. Virtue in the turn here for Luna, as uh, Jack makes uh, makes his own 2-2, two, two, but Luna's going to make a 3-3, three, three, mm-hmm. hitting that Virtue on a adventure. But now knows there's no cards in hand for Jack, so could card cast the Virtue side and start generating some plus one, plus one counters. Mm. Yeah, so a swing with Rafine is pretty safe. I mean, Jared has no cards in hand. Um, Luna has. Let's go to land. 
just drawing a um a mastermind ditching that land mm -hmm. so you know yeah. a relevant spell but i think just the up value of getting this on the battlefield is so mm -hmm. big untap plus one plus one counters on both of our yeah. creatures i think uh, that flyer as well is so key i mean jared can slam his own uh, virtue now i think no more uh no more lies are available <laughs> you know uh, are no longer available as an option here even though both players are, tr are trying their hardest to represent it or playing around it now if you had a removal spell here would you value the removal spell over being able to get the virtue on the battlefield or do you think getting the virtue on the battlefield is more important um tough to say probably virtue is a little bit better now because you can play the removal spell next turn as well but remember alina has a smaller board small uh, like a small amount of creatures just two but uh, that rafine is going to definitely do a lot of work hey speak of the <laughs> devil no more lies being drawn right away yeah, look at that. The boards are gonna be really disgusting, <laughs> especially yeah. after after Jared. Uh, like if Jared gets to his next end step, where another wedding announcement flips, like his board is going to be wide enough that he can start just attacking into it. But there's also restless anchorage, so more flying damage coming through. Remember, Jared's only at ten, and then of course this mm -hmm. this attack phase creatures all have plus one plus one already. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six damage coming across. Jared's got no flies to be blocking with. Yeah, Bat and Dark Slick Shores get discarded, so the Anchorage draws. It was targeted by Rafine. Okay, so I'm trying to think, like, does she need to block end of uh, in this attack phase here? Or mm -hmm. does Jared actually have to just whip an answer? No, I think it's it's still fine. Like, Luna on 14, right? So... Mm -hmm. I think that there's also an anchorage on this side of the board, but it's now Jared draws a, a blue source that doesn't give him damage. So he can animate his own anchorage. Swings with everything. Oh my word, how much is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 damage, if I'm not yeah. wrong. So, uh, yeah, math is for blockers. Doesn't didn't generate a map token. Oh, yeah, we did. It's just coming into play now. Had to go get it yep. from one of our uh token tables, yeah. But those tokens are three threes. Okay, I think Fairy Mastermind can come help as well. But like Rafine's a good blocker, the yeah, the type can crash into the, the samurai there. Um, yeah, this is this is the, this is the, the the bit that I don't like when I'm uh, on the other side. I'm like, okay, right, I've got a block here. So currently, <laughs> with things that aren't blocked, there's going to be what twelve damage coming across. The tokens are all free power. Mm -hmm. The uh, tie binder has got five power, and yeah. the flyer's got three power. I will I will remind everyone who's watching that oh why isn't Luna using uh, the Emperor? It's actually turned off by the Tidebinder. Not anymore though. Now it after that combat, off. but it was it was turned off, so uh, she wasn't able to activate it at all. It looks like Luna fell to two. And oh, that's, it. that's it. That's it. Yeah. We don't get to. Uh, would we not have been able to draw a card in turn because of the extra flyer and and the the uh, anthem effect? It was just going to be enough. So Luna is going to take down that game at number one. We get to look at the sideboards the same as you do at, uh, at home. We'll get them on the screen for you. Players get to look at each other's, of course, because it is an open deck this tournament. Uh, if anybody spots any werewolves in this list, please yeah. let me know in. <laughs> yes, chat. please. As uh, Mateo is going to tell me what, what are the good cards in this matchup and what are the bad cards? What do you think we could be bringing in? What could we be taking out? Mm, I would probably bring in Aklazot, uh, probably a Wandering Emperor, Gix's Command, just something something to try to deal with the Flyers. I haven't yet seen like Pest Control being able to be good, just because it's, it's double-sided, right? So it's not that great. Mm -hmm. But I imagine we're going to see some of these more expensive cards. Loran of the Third Pad is also going to be quite good here for, for Luna because it's... Uh, and destroy evil because you need to get rid of those wedding announcements, get rid of the virtues. Those are those are some of the best cards in this matchup. All right, let's have a little look on the other side. Of course, this is uh, a mirror, but not a full 75 mirror. So moving across to Jarrett's side. Got any any key cards, any game winning? Same games? thing. No, same thing. Uh, Aklazot, Emperor, Loren, uh, <laughs> Destroy Evil, like mostly the same cards. And you want to board out some, some amount of like Denix, pretty 
pretty like weak in this matchup. Tishana's tight bender can be can be sometimes good, can be also pretty average uh, other times as well. So I don't think we're gonna like the players are gonna side with more than four or five cards each. So all right, we'll see well, how that get, turns out. Let's get down to the match then as we move into game number two, round at number five, and just Lango on both sides to drop. Looks like we're going to start off with the uh, deep carrying bats, but it's going to take a point of life, and it is also not going to be stuck around much longer as a cut down is going to deal with it. So we just get to have a little look at the hand, but not take anything. We can see what go for the throw, wedding announcement, a bunch of lands, and is that a Lorian as well? It's, uh, Lauren, L Lauren, yeah, it's 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 a it's a really good hand for for Luna. I mean, the only thing missing is like something like a wedding announcement or similar. Let's see. Land and go. Yeah, I did. I, by the way, I did like quite a bit how Jared played last game, but I think he was playing to the cards that were available to him. I think he sequenced really well, um, but I think he did get punished a little bit by being on the draw. Yeah, it looks like yeah, Luna has uh, Fairy Master as a new card. Now she's going to be able to play the, the wedding announcement, being able to get on board really yeah. quickly, just like in a previous game. Right, it was so so crucial that Luna was able to play a turn three wedding announcement, always one step ahead of Jared. And, and we know uh, how good that card can be, especially in the grinding matchups, as you said, it, it presents mm -hmm. a board, it draws cards, it can start turning it turns into an anthem effect. And both players just able to play lands, playing spells, so kind of neutral at the minute. What would you think is better to have on turn three? A, a wedding announcement or Athena? Wedding announcement is good. It's I, I would say better. Um okay. especially when, when Luna can uh, can play the fairy mastermind that Jerry knows about, probably has a removal spell for it. But a uh, fairy mastermind lines up pretty nicely against the Rafine, where you get to draw draw extra cards, and that's why I, I'm not surprised that Luna just passes the turn here. Oh, however, however, Aklazots, not even scared either. Like, feeling maybe if you got no more lies, sure, yeah, but uh, don't I mean, have any. And this this back god does a lot, especially uh. It's very hard to get off the battlefield once it is on it, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Emperor is a, is a somewhat clean answer if it attacks, but also kind of exposes you to being no more allies, no more light on to by, by the person with the Echo Slots attacking, right? So, or, or Tidebinder as well. So there's a few options here. Let's what see you, what... What do you think about not attacking there? I see not joining... I like it. In the face I like it. The, I, yeah. I, like, I think it's great. Yeah, I would have done the same, like because he knows about the mastermind. He doesn't want to give extra cards to, to Luna here for you know just to improve his, his card quality a little bit here. And we're just passing the turn back again. Well, announcement mm -hmm. is going to flip. Token generated. So now all creatures have got plus one, plus one. This is a big, big turn. A, a huge decision here point here for Jared because he has to recognize the fact that Emperor could be on the side of the board. Go for so the go, go for the third first. Leaves up three mana that could represent either tight binder or normal eyes. Swing with both. Target Rafine though with uh with the Rafine ability. He also puts the Aklazod's attack trigger on the stack as well. He was just explaining how he wants to sequence Stacking. this. Yeah, so we're gonna see Emperor. Emperor. That's a fancy wonder an Emperor as well. Very fancy. Now is the it looks like it's resolving. Okay. But we're going to oh. bounce it back to our hand. Interesting. So it's yeah, he just ran a little bit longer. Yep. So we don't get the trigger for discarding here, right? As in the trigger, he, he, the trigger happens, but you don't get the benefit of what was discarded if it was a land or not. If it, if it, if it was it, to be a like Aklazod's Akl only triggers when when an opponent discards. Uh, one of our opponent discards a card, so he doesn't get any bats. But I think yeah, the okay. I think we're having a judge call here. All right, we're gonna maybe it's something to do with the sequence of the stack. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. what I was saying, because because uh, it's not on the battlefield, once the card is discarded, if that card was a land, which it wasn't, but if it was, the bat token uh, wouldn't have been generated because it was no longer on the battlefield because it got bounced up. And as the stack kind of resolves and we get to that part, there would be no bat generated. So, you know, mm -hmm. again, a lot of sequences. Standard is not an easy format. So complicated, especially these mirrors where you know, do you want to play round? Um, uh, you know, some sort of no more lies, removal spells, are you jamming? 
Are you trying to uh, get go to combat? Are you going to draw extra cards like this? Play around masterminds. So much has got to go through the players' minds in this spot. And uh, I'm, I, I, is it? Are we getting one or two within the triggers here? Is that the question? It should be. It should be draw to discard two because the the it gets determined when creature already attacked, right? So mm -hmm. I believe so at least. I think that might be what we're asking because obviously two cards. No, are... maybe if it, if it goes in response, actually, yeah. Let's see. We'll see how it pans out because obviously two cards were yeah, because it, it's count on resolution, so the number of attacking creatures should be when it resolves. So, so I think Luna gets a yeah, 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 option of which yeah. one is yeah, it's draw out. one, yeah, yeah, it's it's draw one. I uh, I didn't, I I was confused by the whole Ottawa thing, but it's pretty clear that you know now they uh reveal two cards of the top. Um, uh, Luna chose one of them and well, go back on top and then you so shuffle. We, and then the, the card then, drawn yeah. is going to be the card discard. Which yes, is exactly. Case. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you know, slight little uh, miscommunication there. Things virtue off the top. Mm -hmm. That's huge. But uh, game stay is uh, we're back in the match. So, with the shields down, do you just slam virtue here? Is yeah. That, is that good enough? Yeah, 100%. It seems good. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he already, there's already, Luna can already attack for uh seven here with the with the one ones and then slam virtue and it's basically lethal for next turn so this is gonna be seven damage coming across four plus the three from the anthem and then oh maybe maybe we're gonna get okay, so Luna's gonna play a little bit slow here it's fine so uh cut down on the rafine and pass it's gonna get max value here right so now we're gonna be able to generate a token as well Mm -hmm. And really, see on the other side, it's just going to be a, a, the back guard coming down, so we can generate a two mana, uh, a two mana free free end of turn, which we can also put a plus one plus one count on it next turn to give it first strike, and then we untap. Yeah, this is uh, this could start snowballing away for Jared again. Only at eight life, but does have a four four life linker. Mm -hmm. There's the nine. Draw a step for Luna. It is another wedding announcement. Yeah, when it, it rains, it pours for Jared. I mean, at, at this point, he's he's kind of in a, in, a, in a tough spot, right? Where he, like, he needs to attack with the Aklazas to gain the life back, to so get some value right out of this card. card. Now what Luna can do is uh, pump up, let's say, the Knight to give it first strike and make it a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, and just attacks with that one. And then just play the Virtue. Yeah. And and uh, really make the board really big. And what what Jerry can do? Like, okay, Jerry can attack the 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 emperor. Uh, Luna's going to discard. He's going to gain four life. He's going to go up to eight. Going to go up to eight. But he would need we really need like a pest control here, right? And I don't yeah. think he, he wants to board in cards like this in this sort of matchup. A card that is only good when you're behind. Would a virtue be good enough here? If we gain four life and tap, have a five five life linker, then go on blocks. Is that going to be good enough? I think this is. Good. <sighs> I'm just trying to think of answers, but yeah. it doesn't look like we've got it. Wedding announcement is going to be the yeah. card for turn. Generating a 1-1 token. Passing the turn back at four life. Facing a bunch of blockers. Uh, wrong attackers against just the two blockers. But that, does that life link change anything here? Mm. And I think mm. Luna's going through the, the map herself. I think this game is all over Red Rover. Yeah, also and, and, and Rafine as well. Oh, there's going to be a lot of draws. Yeah. Counter. Yeah. making the, yeah, So that's going to have got first strike as a 4-4. Four, yeah. four. And in with the team trigger. Yeah, and make the smallest one bigger. Give it plus, like, connect four. Smallest one, yeah, I think. Jerry can just still jump. Yeah. So one, two. Obviously, we're looking for a removal spell here. Doesn't find a removal spell. A bunch of lands plus another virtue. We're going to discard these four, one of them being a wedding announcement, the free land. So another plus one, plus one count is going to get added. So uh, move to blocks. And we yeah, can go up to eight, but then um, no matter what eight damage comes across. Well, what, wait, I, I think J Jared just forgot about the all the triggers from the Rafine, right? Because Aklazot should generate like three bats. Luna discarded three lands. Oh, hold on. We've, now we've got a... a Destroy evil. Evil. That's going to take that. Yeah, but, out. but all the, I think Jared forgot forgot about all the bats. 
that that's why Axel's out is good against huge. this huge yeah because th those were like all chump blockers right whoa yeah you're that's yeah i, I think he might just end up kicking of... himself after this potentially yeah. could have another three creatures on the battlefield or even a bigger life total buffered from blocking with those bats yeah okay yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's a uh, it's your own card, your own triggers. You're you're allowed to forget them. Your opponent's not uh, required to remind you. And yeah, I think man, yeah, Jared's gonna be kicking himself for for missing that. Yep, scooping him up. We're gonna see Luna taking this one down, advancing to a four-one-one record. So congratulations to her. We're going to have, uh, we're going to come back to the booth and then we're going to play you a short video from our sponsor, Heavy Play, before we come back for our backup feature match here in round number five. So don't go anywhere. 